So we're getting ready to do another project in our Class C, and the project we're doing today is our dinette. So we want to renovate the dinette because it has this carpet across the top. I guess it's not carpet, but it's like fabric across the top of the top of the dinette. I don't care for that. The sides, they're uh, that dark wood that we put in here that keeps breaking. In addition to that, we want a brand new tabletop that gives it kind of a, uh, just a, a new feel that doesn't feel just like an RV. We've got a friend of ours from Bourgeois Woodworking who is going to do a custom tabletop that's made out of, what, what is he using again? Walnut? Walnut, yes, yeah. walnut. So, and he is going to cut and glue together strips to make it really, uh, really unique so excited about that and they're going to match our laptop tables that we're doing too so let's get started yes let's do it i'm going to remove the dining room table and what we're going to do is we're going to bring this to bourgeois woodworking so that they can copy the table the same same dimensions that's here and i really can't wait to see how beautiful these tables are going to be so to take this table out you just kind of give it a, a jig and a pull and then set it to the side Pull the arms out. And so on this next table, the, these brackets will get mounted on uh, by Bourgeois wood, Woodworking to um, put those on the next table. So I'm here with Rob Bourgeois from Bourgeois Woodworking. He's not only a good friend, but he is a master carpenter and he can do many, many things. So really, I, I've kind of done a lot of woodworking uh, ever since I was a teenager. Uh, done anywhere from construction to just small things that my mom and dad would always want. Started selling pieces and then it just kind of grew from there. And so my favorite wood to work with is actually walnut and it always turns out beautiful once you start putting finish on it. Because I try to make things that I, I would want them in my house. Now I got a bowl for my wife for our anniversary that actually had uh, the composite material in there. Uh, this is a resin and uh, I think this is pecan bowl. It's basically the process is taking a, a container and you take a piece of any kind of wood that you want. So you put the, the wood in there and then you choose the color of the resin that you're wanting. And you pour it in there and you put it into a pressure pot and let it set over 24 hours and it sets. So once that's done, you um, Take the piece out, put it on your lathe, and start creating. You've got your raw piece going, and then this is these are actually called your chisels. You have different types that you use, and uh, you're just basically, as you're going through there, you're just trying to create that as you're going. And when you're going into it, you're just barely taking off a little at a time. So basically, what happens is you, you do, I always do the outside, and you create a tendon. So you can take it off of this and put another type of uh, tool to hold it, which goes in here and expands and holds it and turn around and you can do the inside of it. Sometimes I'll put the piece of wood into a oven so it actually does crack. Okay. So when you pour the resin in, it'll get into those cracks and just create a neat. It's really cool the way that resin reflects the light too. So with making the tables, like what I've done, um, for their table. Kevin brought me this that they're trying to do. So they wanted a dark wood, so I'm, I love walnut. So I'm gonna, I told them I said, if we can do it out of walnut, it'll be pretty. So what I did is just took the measurements of this and started uh, cutting and milling down uh, the wood to accommodate that. Now with walnut, it's very hard to get wide pieces uh, of walnut. So I do several pieces and I just glue them up. And then that way it also gives it a nice, really good figure with different grains going different ways in it. And, it, and it, it's just it's just a pretty, pretty thing to me. So what I did is I cut out pieces that will, will glue up to make the size of the table. And I've got them numbered so I know how to lay them into the clamps for glue up. So they'll be straight. But these I were all rough saw number, which I don't have a piece to show you, but 
So what I did is I ran them through the planer to get them smooth, and then I ran them through the, uh, the drum sander to get them flat for, to do the glue. Basically how this works is I just I take the glue and I run it and I spread it really good. And I'm, I'm very generous with the glue because this glue right here I use for all, just about everything because um, it's waterproof, food proof, whatever and the wood will actually break before that glue breaks. So I take out everything and I glue them all together and I start using the clamps, bring the clamps together and you just start tightening as you go and you take the mallet because you want to try to get it as flat as possible as you're going. So when you go to your finishing stages through a jump sander, you don't have a bunch of uh, different levels. I mean, there always will be, but you try to get all your as flat as possible. And then I'll shape it however it needs to be shaped. I'll cut it and shape it throughout the edges. Um, most of the time I use a, uh, a little, little hand router. I've got like four or five routers, but this one right here is my go-to router for everything. It almost becomes second nature because you use it so much with everything. So, and you can just choose however you want your edge to look, um, depending on the customer, or if they leave it up to me, I usually ask my wife. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, once I get it all shaped and done, then I will take a my branding iron. And this is my logo and I will heat that up with fire and brand every piece that I do and then I will treat it with whatever kind of finish the customers wanting if they want just a dull finish I'll maybe use some some type of wax and oil or if they want a good glossy finish always use a good wipe on poly and it's good and hard I am so super excited about my tables because they are absolutely beautiful and I just hope that you're able to see these. We're going to do some close-ups. I hope you're able to capture just how beautiful they are. If you are looking for somebody to do any kind of custom woodworking, that's your guy right there. His work <laughs> is fabulous. I have, I have some of the pieces in my house. I buy them pe for people for Christmas gifts. He does beautiful work and it's all reason reasonably priced as well. It's so worth it. So check him out and get something for, for your projects. So I do have a website, bourgeoiswoodworks.com. Nice. And we'll put a link in the description below where you can get in touch with Rob and have him make you a one of a kind custom piece. I recovered the cushions and they look great, but the old upholstery is still on the very top of the dinette and I just don't like the way it looks. We painted over it when we painted, but it just looks kind of odd. So I'd like to take that off and put a trim. To go ahead and get started on this project, I need to remove the sides from the dinette. All right, so I'm going to attempt to cut this off using the razor blade. I'm not really sure what's underneath here, but I'm gonna to try to push it in. Ooh, it's real stiff. So that's what it is, all right. Can get under there. Okay. Two additional tools you're gonna to need is a pry bar and a pair of pliers to pull out the staples. Okay, so that was actually easier in some aspects and a little harder in others. All right, so last night when we finished pulling off the tram, we had to make our 15th trip to Home Depot and we just got kind of tired. And so we called it a night, but we are ready to get back at it again today. So we're gonna start with, now that we have all of the trim off the dinette, including the side, now we're gonna go ahead and get the trim cut, the replacement trim, and we're going to get that ready. So one thing you're going to need is trim. So make sure you pick out the trim that best suits your dinette. So when we went to Home Depot, I found some trim like this because the top of our dinette is actual, 
The top of our dinette is actually curved, so we needed a trim that was flexible. So this is the trim that we got for the top of the dinette, and then along the sides, we just got some wood pieces. So now that we have the trim cut, we're now going to use some kills, some spray paint kills to go ahead and cover it before we install it on the dinette and paint it. This just helps with that coverage. And I found that even with the PVC trim, if you use that kills first, it will the, the paint will stick to it and you won't have that chipping and scratching off of the paint. Always make sure that the board is clean before you spray. We're going to go ahead and glue on the top with liquid nails and we got the strongest liquid nails there was, that there was available and we're going to tape that down. No. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and we're at the place where we're ready to put the trim on the sides of the dinette table. So I'm marking them so we know how high we want them to be on the side. So now we're going to go ahead and fix that little issue that we're having that we have with the outlet and put a different outlet inside the dinette. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and shut off the breaker so we can make sure that the electricity is off and no one gets shocked. Next thing we're going to do is kind of get down into this panel here and take a look at this outlet. So uh, after we added the additional outlet to put the subwoofer and connect it inside, Stacy said she'd really like to have one on the outside over here. So what I'm doing, the subwoofer's screwed into place, so what I'm doing is I've marked the inside of the wood here and then I'm just starting to score it with this razor blade. And I'll be able to put the box in like this, screwed into the little stud in the corner here and push it through, but this is thin thin plywood so I'm just going to basically cut my hole with the razor blade um, just make it easier and, and less messy. We're going to tap into this existing outlet and bring the wire over to where our new outlet is going to be. Of course we want to make sure that we have the circuit shut off so I'm going to go hit the circuit which I know which one it is but I'm going to double check it to make sure that the light is off on the subwoofer when I hit it. Okay, so as you know, I am always super excited about everything, but I am really excited about this outlet on the outside of the dining room table because it's gonna be so much easier than trying to plug something in. Usually my laptop underneath the dining room table, now I can just slide it right, it's right at the end. Now it's time to go ahead and take off some of the painter's tape and we're gonna add some more painter's tape and touch up the paint on the dinette.
We are so excited because we got our table back from Bourgeois Woodworking. So he did a phenomenal job with the table. It is so beautiful and it looks so pretty in here. What a massive difference it is from what we had to what this looks like now. Yeah, and he used a, uh, a satin finish on the walnut which just brings out the grain so beautifully and it really just um, goes so well with what we have right here. It really, really looks good. We're really I, excited. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. So if you are looking for somebody to do some custom woodworking for you or you're just looking for some really cool pieces, you need to look up Bourgeois Woodworking because he does a phenomenal job. We will have him linked in the description below mm -hmm. so you can take advantage of that as well. It was, it's fabulous. fabulous. For more videos like this, click on the screen or go to our website and check out one of our playlists. Also, if you found value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel. As always, doing things yourself saves you money and allows you to be, be free. free. See you in the next video.